Hello people of the internet, this is Shaky Jake, and I really need a catchphrase. You are watching Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic on Impossible Difficulty, where previously on KOTOR we talked to our Jedi party members, primarily Jahani, because I needed to get her set up for all her personal side quest, which I believe I have now done. As in, I've now got the requirements for that side quest ready and rating because I don't want to trigger it just yet for a variety of reasons which I've explained in the past video because it's a buggy side quest and various other things. So force powers that I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick throw lightsaber because I'm going to need it for the end of the game and I'm going to pick, it's a difficult choice between force resistance and energy resistance I think I'm going to go for energy resistance, which I could be completely wrong about that, but I'm going to go for it anyway. So to give you guys a little bit of context into this particular part, what's going to take place, this is going to be my last recording for Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic for 2017. And I wanted to end it on a special note, so there's going to be a lot of editing related to this part. And there's going to be quite a lot of action, and it's going to be quite a long part, I believe, based on the content we're going to do. And, spoiler alert, for anyone who hasn't played this game before, we are going to get intercepted by a ship known as the Leviathan, which is the ship that was responsible for destroying Taris way back towards the beginning of the game and we're going to get intercepted by that ship so what we're going to do is make a move to Caravan because that's the last planet we need to go to but we're not going to get there because we're going to get intercepted by the Leviathan What happened? What's going on? Sith interdictor ship. They must have been waiting for us on the hyperspace route. We're caught in their tractor beam. Do you recognize the ship? It's the Leviathan. Saul Karath's vessel. My old mentor. Admiral Kareth taught me everything I know about being a soldier. He was a legend in the Republic fleet, and a hero to me, until he betrayed us. When the Sith attacked my homeworld, the Leviathan, which is Saul Kareth's flagship, was at the head of the fleet. My family was destroyed that day, and my wife died in the Sith bombardment. Don't do anything you'll regret, Carl. I'm not gonna do anything stupid. I mean, I won't throw our lives away in some mad quest for vengeance, but... If I get a chance to kill Saul during our escape, nobody better get in my way. Talk of an escape is somewhat premature, don't you think? We don't even have a plan to get out of this mess yet. I'll admit, it won't be easy. Saul's no fool, and he won't underestimate us either. You can count on plenty of guards watching every move we make. Maybe Admiral Carath doesn't know how many of us there are on board. We all have special talents. Talents we could exploit so that one of us could stage a rescue. We just have to figure out who has the best chance to avoid capture so they can come and rescue us later. It's a long shot, but it's our only hope. Carth knows Sol the best. He can get us out of this. The Admiral will be watching the three of us far too closely for any plot involving you, me, or Carth to succeed. 
It's going to be up to one of the others to get us out of this. Well, if we're gonna pick someone to save our skins, we better do it quick. In another minute, we're gonna have Sith troops marching up our loading ramp. Ooh, that's that's a little bit um, kinky, calf. Uh, okay, so I've actually already done some recordings with every single party member you can select, and I am gonna show off all of their, you know, escape scenes. But we're gonna pick T3 for this because I've barely used him, and I like to think T3 as being the chosen rescuer. This sounds like a job for a Wookie. Is that wise? We need someone inconspicuous for this task, and Wookiees tend to draw a lot of attention, especially from arresting troops. Maybe you should go with someone else. Ah, Salbar never gets chosen. That sucks. Okay. Mission can do it. No prison can hold her. Maybe I can goad the guards into making a mistake. If I get them mad enough, they might put me in a separate cell to punish me. With them focusing so much on you three, I might be able to sneak out of my cell and come rescue the rest of you. It's a risk we have to take, Big Z. I can slice my way free of any security cell. Don't worry, I can pull this off. Jahani, you can use your force powers and camouflage abilities to avoid capture. You speak the truth. I alone of all the group might be able to remain hidden if the Sith search the ship. I could wait until the guards have completed their search, then come to rescue you. Kandorus, is there some way we could exploit your healing ability? You could give me a shot to delay my healing mods from kicking in. A small incendiary grenade will leave burn marks that look like I was injured while making repairs to the ship. Make my wounds bad enough, and the Sith will drag me off to the morgue or the medical facility to die. When my healing mods kick in, I'll come back and save the rest of you. Maybe Joe Lee could use the Force to affect their minds. I don't think I could use my Force powers to convince a whole squadron of troopers to let me go free, but maybe I can use it to get them to take me to a separate cell. They'll probably only leave a single guard to watch over an old man like me. I could use the Force to convince the guard to set me free. Then I could free the rest of you. A droid would have the best chance. HK-47 could come and rescue us. Statement. My construction includes a reserve memory chip and backup power supply that automatically kicks in if I have been shut down too long. Deactivate my main circuits and wipe my memory chip. The Sith will take me to the junk heap and I can come rescue the rest of you after I reactivate. T3M4 is a pretty resourceful little guy. He could pull this off. Well, the droid's right. If we disable him, the Sith will probably wipe his memory chips and take him to the junk pile. But if we can rig a backup memory chip with a timer, when it kicks in, the little fellow will be reactivated and he can come find us. Let's do it. Hold on. They're dragging us into the docking bridge. We're coming aboard. Nobody try anything and we'll vaporize your entire ship. These are the three we are supposed to watch out for, Commander. But there's more inside. Bring them all. Throw them in the prison. Lord Malik will want to speak with them. Bastila, Karth, and the crew have been taken prisoner as you ordered, Commander. Excellent. Have you searched the ship thoroughly? Admiral Karath warned me to be on alert for any kind of treachery. We found a disabled astromech droid in the back of the ship. Wipe its memory chips and take it to the junk pile. Maybe we can use some of its parts for salvage. We found a young Twi'lek in the back. She's got quite the mouth on her. She swore at me and spit on my uniform. She tried to bite me through my armor, and you should hear what she said about my mother. Admiral Karath needs to teach her the proper respect for the Sith. The Admiral doesn't have time to bother with some Twilight girl. Drag away to solitary confinement. I'll leave it up to you to teach her the proper respect for the Sith. We found an injured Mandalorian in the back. Looks like he was trying to rig the ship's engines to break free of our tractor beam when something exploded. Admiral Karath wants us to question all the prisoners. Did you get any information from him? He's unconscious right now. I don't think he's going to make it. He's burned pretty bad. Dump the Mandalorian in the medical bay. Let them take the blame if he dies before the Admiral has a chance to interrogate him. We found an old man in the back. I, I think we should keep him separate from the others for questioning. A strange request. And why do you think this old man should be segregated? I, I'm not sure, Commander. After speaking with him, I just, I, I just think we should question him away from the others. I, I agree, Commander. After speaking with the old man, I think we should question him away from the others. Very well. The Admiral is probably too busy to bother with this old man anyway. Take him to solitary confinement for interrogation. Report back to me if you learn anything. We found a disabled hunter-killer droid in the back of the ship. Excellent. 
We can reprogram this droid to fight in our own army. Wipe its memory chip and take it to the salvage shop. The technicians will deal with it later. We searched the ship from top to bottom. Somebody would have had to be invisible for us not to find them in there. Well done. Return to your posts and I'll tell the Admiral of this. Karth, it has been far too long since we last spoke. I see the recent months have not been kind in your case. I barely recognized you. But I recognize you, Saul. I see your face every night, even as I promise myself I will kill you for what you did to my whole world. Did you learn nothing in your time under me? As a soldier, you should understand that casualties were unavoidable. This was an act of war. It was a cowardly act of betrayal. Your fleet bombed a civilian target into oblivion without warning or provocation, and the blood of those innocent people is on your hands. In war, even the innocent must die. The Sith would not accept me until I proved I had truly turned my back on the Republic by bombing the planet. My wife died in that attack, Saul. So, and for that, I swear I'll kill you. You used to be a man of action, not of empty words. Cling to your lust for revenge if you must, but spare me your tired threats. I've heard them all before. You're an insignificant part of these events anyway. Lord Malak is far more interested in your Jedi companions. He has great plans for them. We will never serve Malak or the Dark Side. The Sith will be destroyed, Admiral Carath, as will you if you don't turn away from this path. Your words are brave, Bastila, but the lure of the Dark Side is hard to resist. Or so I've been told. I wonder if your companion is as devoted to the light as you are. Come on, girly. Into the cell. Let's go. I haven't got all day to waste on you. I need to get back to my post. Quit crowding me. Sheesh. Of Mechamorians, you didn't smell as bad as you said. You think you're pretty funny, don't you? But you're only making things worse for yourself. How come every time you open your mouth to talk, the scent of rancor dung comes out? Maybe a little time in solitary confinement will teach you the proper respect for the Sith. Now get into that cell. Who designed those Sith uniforms anyway? A blind Rodian with a sick sense of humor? Oh, that's funny. You should tell that one to the torturer when he comes to deal with you. What? You're... you're going to torture me? No snappy comeback this time. The thought of torture scares you, hmm? Well, it should. The Sith have ways to inflict pain you can't even imagine. It may be a few hours before your torture begins. We're busy interrogating your friends right now. Hey, I know. You could use this time to think up witty ways to beg for mercy. <laughs> Or I could use the key card I lifted from your pocket to slice into the security panel and get myself out of this cell. Piece of cake. I wonder when people will stop underestimating me. You're wasting your time, Sol. I'll never betray the Jedi. You're defiant. I'm certain Malak will find your loyalty to the Jedi amusing. The Dark Lord would probably reward me if I just killed you once and for all, but he may want to question you given the trouble you've caused him, and the history between you. History? What are you talking about? You mean, oh, this can't be true, can it? You really don't know what's going on here, do you? Well, I won't be the one to deprive Malik of the pleasure of telling you himself. The Dark Lord will no doubt torture you for information and for his own twisted pleasure. Eventually, you will tell him everything. The Sith can be very persuasive. However, Lord Malik is in another sector. It may be some time before he arrives, so I suppose I will have to fill in for him until then. Activate the torture fields. <laughs> God, I need to speak with you. What do you want, old man? You better not be trying to cause any trouble, or you'll be sorry. The cell is too drafty. My old bones could catch a chill in here. We don't want that. You better let me out. Ah, uh, yes, it's too drafty in there. Your old bones might catch a chill. We don't want that. Get out of there. 
You shouldn't have let me out, Sonny. That was wrong. Admiral Carith won't be too happy with you disobeying his orders. Yes. What I did was wrong. Very wrong. You deserve to be locked up in the cell for disobeying orders. Yes. I deserve to be locked up for disobeying orders. <sighs> what, what just happened? What am I doing in here? Damn you, old man. I'll kill you if I ever get out of here. Then I'll be sure to never let you out. Goodbye, Sonny. Enough. I don't want them to pass out before I question them. Malik will appreciate any information I can give him when he arrives. Don't waste your breath, Saul. We won't answer any of your questions. I'm sure you won't. However, we both know your friend's loyalties have proven in the past to be somewhat flexible. What are you talking about? I am interrogating you, not the other way around. You will answer questions, not ask them. It is time to put your loyalty to the test. I doubt torturing you will gain me your true cooperation. Your will is too strong to be broken that way. However, even the strongest of heroes has trouble watching those they care about suffering. The interrogation will begin now. Each time you refuse to answer or give me a false answer, Bastila will suffer. I will not betray the Jedi Order, even to save Bastila. My pain is meaningless. Tell him nothing. I tire of these games. Now I want answers. On what planet is the Jedi Academy at which you were trained? There's only one correct answer here, and I have to go for the original Star Wars reference. Alderaan. It's on Alderaan. Alderaan is nothing but a planet of artisans and philosophers. There is no training academy there. You must think this is a game. Very well, this is the price of your resistance. <coughs> Enough. You see what happens when you try to defy me. This first question was a test. Obviously, Malak knew the Academy was on Dantuin, and it has since been destroyed by our fleet. Dantuin is an empty graveyard now. Nothing is there but a smoking ruin and the charred remains of your former masters. I never liked them anyway. A brave front, but your feigned indifference does not fool me. Your masters are eradicated along with any hope of someone rescuing you. Now, tell me your mission. How were the Jedi planning on using you to stop Lord Malak and our Sith Armada? We have been sent to assassinate Lord Malak. Do you take me for a fool? The Jedi are not assassins. They would never devise such a plan. Perhaps you need a reminder of the consequences of refusing to cooperate. No! Uh, no! Uh, pain! Pain! Ah! Listen, can you not hear her suffering? You can spare her further pain by simply answering my questions. Now I will ask again, on what mission did the Jedi Council send you? This accomplishes nothing, Sal. We will never betray the Republic. Perhaps another lesson is in order. No! Ah, ah, no! I beg you, no! Mercy! No! No! I am surprised she did not pass out sooner. Rarely have I seen someone withstand such punishment and remain conscious. I see I am wasting my time here. When Malak arrives, you will learn my interrogation techniques are considered merciful among the Sith. I will leave you here in your cell with a small taste of the horrors you will suffer when Lord Malak arrives. Oh, and Bastila is pretty much unconscious there. That's quite worrying, actually. Don't try to move too quickly. You might not be fully recovered yet. Admiral Carath had his guards continue to torture you even after you passed out. They tortured all of us, though you got the worst of it by far. Saul wanted them to make us suffer. He's become some sort of sadistic monster. The dark side has perverted him, Karth. Once you start down the tainted path, it leads you ever further into the depths of evil. 
I fear he is forever lost. Blah, blah, blah. Don't you ever get tired of being so preachy? This is not a matter to joke about. If there is one thing we can learn from Saul, it's how the power of the dark side can corrupt even the bravest of heroes. I'm sorry, forgive me. Snapping at you like that won't help our situation. I suppose I'm taking the news of Dantooine's destruction quite hard. First Taras, now the Academy. Is there no end to the killing? It's their own fault. They should have seen the attack coming. We should have felt a disturbance in the Force when the attack came. The fact that we did not is a bad sign. I fear the dark side is growing stronger, casting shadows our vision cannot pierce. I can only hope that some of the Jedi escaped. Rook, Endar, Saar. I cannot imagine all of them being gone. In any case, we've lost our one place of refuge in the galaxy. None of this will matter if we don't get out of this prison before Saul gets back. Where is Saul Carif now? Saul mentioned that Lord Malak was on his way. I think the Admiral left to prepare for his arrival and to report the results of our interrogation. It is fortunate you were able to resist the Admiral's questioning. The fate of the galaxy could be changed by revealing the slightest piece of vital information. I have to confess something. There was a moment, just a moment, when part of me was hoping you would tell him what he wanted to know, just to make the horrible pain stop. Saul would have tortured us no matter what I told him. I've known Admiral Carath a long time, and I think you're right. The interrogation was a sham. Saul was toying with us. He didn't care what we told him. I think it was just an excuse to torture us before Malak arrived. Did you feel that? A disturbance in the Force. The Admiral has sent his message. The Dark Lord knows we are here now. Malak is coming. Well, then we better hope T3M4 busts us out of here before he arrives. Now, I actually rarely picked T3 when I was a kid when I first played this game, simply because I never actually used him. But as I've got older, I think it makes more sense for the characters to pick T3. So we have a bit of a logic puzzle to solve. So, memory wipe initiated. If you fail any of this, you die, and then you have to watch the whole sequence again. So hopefully I don't fail this. You sense the other droid attempting to access your higher memory areas. You will need to take key opportunities to interfere with the process and slice the enemy droid in turn. A stream of numbers is being loaded into your core memory systems. Memory spelt incorrectly for some reason. By completing the series you can corrupt the data stream and disrupt the other droid's programming. I believe it's free. There is a sharp burst of static from the other droid as its communication programs begin to deteriorate. Okay, so that was successful. Uh, I'm not going to read all this out, so let's just carry on. 001101 10. Okay, awesome. And then one more. 23571 and we succeeded. Awesome. Again, if you get any of those wrong, you automatically die and it's game over. So we got T3M4 and he has all of his equipment still equipped, which is awesome because if you pick Mission and Jolie, they will lose everything. Again, I still sound really rough, so it's a little bit annoying in that sense. So let's just see what's going on here. Uh, right. We haven't got many repair parts, so let's leave it alone for now. When I was a kid, I used to pick Jahani pretty much all the time, simply because she could go invisible and all that good stuff. So, stern, that didn't work. Okay, hopefully T3 doesn't get, you know, battered here. Okay, he is losing health pretty quick though. Again, T3M4 is much better in the sequel as a, you know, a combat. In the first game he's pretty weak. So what we need to do is get to the detention area, but unfortunately it's locked, so we have to go to a computer terminal to open it. But we have to do a few things first. So let's go in the medical bay and see if there's anything in here. Oh, there's actually a... Um... Oh, there's an actual body here. That's quite cool. 
that's a character that's been restored with the restored, you know, the restoration mod. And again, there's been a few changes with the restoration mod with the Leviathan, which I am going to show off in the video at some point. But that character lying down in the medical bay is one. And then you've also got a few other things. So you've also got that cutscene at the very beginning once you've picked your party member to break you out. When the Sith soldiers gather you, Karf and Bastila up, that's been added back in. Okay, that was a nice first attack. And I think that's the only edits for now. Just that first cutscene and the addition of that woman's body in the medical bay. We can't go this way yet because we can't go to the lift until we've actually rescued our main crew. You know, our main three. Our character, Karth and Bastila, are pretty much the main characters in this game. And again, depending on which party member you pick, you have different starting locations. So Mission and Jolie will both be over here in the cells. Um, HK will be in the same room as T3 if I remember correctly and Candorus will also be in the medical bay just stuff like that so let's go over here and talk to this Rodian <laughs> beep boop beep whoop beep beep Okay, so T3 is really good at security, so let's just get him out. Okay, so we get an icebreaker, which is a ridiculously powerful item. And that's what we're going to use to get the detention area open. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to uh, deal with something there. So, we've got the icebreaker now and we're going to use that to hack into a terminal once we've dealt with these Sith soldiers. Oh that was a nice lot of damage then, well done T3. Again it's a bit of a shame that T3's not a viable party member as such in the first Knights of the Old Republic apart from hacking into things and using security and anything along those lines. But I do like using him for the Leviathan sequence simply because it gives him a bit more of a use besides the beginning of the game when you first get him. Now we're going to break into this terminal because that's what we need to do. Use the icebreaker or we could just slice into the computer because of T3's really good computer use but we're not going to do that. So icebreaker's hooked up so now we can pretty much do everything because our computer spikes has been boosted to 99 temporarily. So let's use them wisely. So we can look at all the cameras. Yes, release the force fields, why not? This sets up a nice little animation where a massive fight starts between the Sith and the Rodian prisoners. Let's make it a bit more interesting. Let's uh, get some gas on. They did kill one of the Rodians beforehand, which is a bit of bad timing on my part, but oh well. So now, let's see if there's anything else we can do. There is not. Turn to the root menu. Okay, so we need to open the detention area. So we've done that. We can kill ourselves if we really want, but we're not going to do that. So now that that's sorted, we can now go back and get our main crew. Let's heal up. From what I remember, construction kits are the best healing item for droids in the games. Uh, I think they're like the equivalent of life support kits for humanoid characters. So let's go down here. The detention area should now be open. Yes, it is. And let's go to this terminal and unlock the cells. You may be a droid, but when this is all over, I'm going to see the Republic gives you a medal for your part in this. Now, if I remember the layout of the ship, <laughs> the droid with a medal. be in a storage chamber just through the north doors. After we grab our stuff, we need to get to the main bridge controls. The bridge is the only place that we can open the docking gates of the hangar where they've got the Ebon Hawk. We have to open those gates before we can fly out of here. We better get moving. I can feel the darkness of Malak's presence approaching, and I don't want to be here when he arrives. None of us is a match for the Sith Lord. 
Oh, don't put yourself down, Bastila. We're trained in the ways of the Force. We can easily take him together. We need some type of plan. Surprise and secrecy will serve us best. A small group might have a better chance of sneaking onto the bridge undetected while the others make their way down to the Ebon Hawk. Count me in, then. I've got a score to settle with the Admiral before we get off this ship. And I have a feeling I'm going to find him on the Leviathan's bridge. Careful, Calf. There's more at stake here than personal revenge. That's true, Calf. You can come, but don't let your hatred of Saul Carath jeopardize our true mission, getting the Ebon Hawk safely off the Leviathan. You better come with me and Karth. The others can find their way on their own, but we might run into trouble. We'll need you and your powerful Force abilities to deal with it. The three of us will get our equipment and make our way to the bridge. The rest of you head down to the docking hangar where they've got the Ebon Hawk. You'll have to find a way to deal with the guards. Don't you worry about that. I know how to deal with the guards. They won't know what hit them. Good. Get to the equipment room, grab what you need, and get going. We'll meet you there as soon as we get those docking bay doors open. Just make sure the Hawk is ready to fly when we get there. And may the Force be with you. We still have to get our equipment. Let's go. And I can easily imagine Candorus leading the rest of the party down to the Ebon Hawk. That I totally believe. Now, if this was Knights of the Old Republic 2, you'd be playing both sections of this breakout mission. But alas, we're only going to be playing as, you know, Red, Calf, and Bastila. So, Calf and Bastila are already fully equipped and clothed and everything. So then they're just leaving me to get changed. Great. So, let's go and see where our stuff is. Uh, it's in one of these lockers, I believe. So, let's check this first one. 2,000 credits, okay. Is it this one? Yeah, as you can see, judging by how many items are in here, this is our entire... Oh, look, there's our race bonds from the plants. I think we can sell those for a lot of money, actually. Here's all of our stuff from the entirety of the game, so let's get items, and now we can put our stuff back on. So, let's get a crypt. Um, yes, we'll put these on. Get the power gloves. We'll go for extra constitution, definitely, and strength. And then I think we're only going to have one lightsaber for a bit, because I think that will improve our defense. Let me double check. So defense, 23, whereas if we have two lightsabers, yeah, it goes down by three. So I'm just going to have the one lightsaber for now. Okay, so we're now fully equipped and we can deal with getting off the Leviathan. And again, this is one of my favourite sections of the entire game. I didn't used to like it when I was a kid, but as I've got older, it's actually one of the most fun parts of the entire game. Damn carking guard duty. Could there be a damn thing in the galaxy that's more boring than sitting in a medical bay, making sure some med packs aren't stolen? I hear you. If I have to play one more round of Pazak to pass the time, I swear I'll give Admiral Kareth my resignation papers myself. Yeah, tell me about it. Okay, we're not going to actually, you know, kill those Sith soldiers and wake the um, Major, I believe. We're not going to wake her up simply because I've done a recording where I'll show you what happens if you do do that. Don't shoot. Only the guards were armed. I don't have any weapons. I'm injured. I surrender. I surrender. Who are you? I'm Major Herka of the Sith 2nd Battalion. Most of my unit was sacrificed for the sake of better strategic position in the last land battle against the Republic. Luckily, only my arm was injured in the attack. I could still make a break for it when we were overrun. Because I'm an officer, I was taken here to the medical bay for treatment. Of course, Lord Malik ordered that any enlisted Sith soldiers fleeing the battle be gunned down for desertion. I feel bad for my troops, but you've got to maintain discipline. How could you kill your own troops? You're a monster. The Republic is soft. They don't even torture prisoners, let alone kill their own troops. That's why we Sith are winning so many of the battles. The fear of Lord Malik keeps the troops in line. It makes my job as an officer easier too. Nobody ever questions any of my orders. 
Look, I'd love to stick around, but I really have to get off this ship. You may have escaped your cell, but you'll never make it off the Leviathan. Your ship's locked up in the docking bay, and only the main bridge computer can open the bay doors. Then it looks like you're going to have to help me. Why would I want to help you? You're the enemy. You're not really in a position to refuse me. If Admiral Kareth finds out I helped you, I'm dead. But I guess it's better than having you kill me now. I just hope no one ever finds out what I've done. But you'll never make it to the bridge. Too much security. There's droids, soldiers, and gun turrets. There has to be some other way to get past them. Not unless you can breathe in outer space. The only corridor on the ship leading to the bridge goes right through the security station. You'll never make it. You're an officer, right? You can get me past the security. I'll get you past the bridge security station, but I think your plan is going to get us both killed. This is madness. It'll never work. The guards will see me with you. They'll tell Admiral Kareth I was helping you. He'll have me quiet already. I should never have agreed to this. You signed my death warrant. Keep it up and I'll gag you. Are you forgetting where we are? Now be quiet. Okay, I've punched in my security clearance. The doors are unlocked and you don't have to worry about the droids or the gun turrets in the next room. But in the next room, there's a half a dozen guards. I don't know how you plan on getting past them. You can get us past the guards. Come on. I will get you past the guards. Come on, follow me. I'll take you past the security station. Major Herka. Officer. Major, I'll need you to confirm the code that I'm sending to your personal communicator. Ma'am? Is everything alright? Well, uh, no. Those vicious pigs with me are prisoners. What? Are they part of the group of prisoners we took off that freighter? Damn it, Herka. Yes. Can you help? I have no idea what she is talking about. Obviously, the injuries she has sustained have made her delirious. I don't know. Look at her. She's obviously not in her right mind. Next thing you know, she'll be telling you that Admiral Carruff is really a flying bamfer who eats dinner with crate dragons. You're... you're right. Major, I'm sorry, but you're going to need to go to the medical bay with some of my men. What? What do you mean? No. No. No, this cannot be happening. Come along now. Ah! What the? Bring her ah! down! Narlis, make sure the Major is stabilized and then take her away. Yes, sir. As for you, you'd better go conduct your business on the bridge. What can I do? Ready. What? That's all restored content. I'm not sure if those two Sith soldiers were fan voice acted or if those were original voice actors that Bioware hired. Part of me is leaning towards them being fan created when it comes to the voice acting there. But we're going to do the Leviathan as it was originally intended by Bioware, i.e. you have to play through the entire ship before you can escape. If you go into the medical bay, you have a massive opportunity to skip the vast majority of the Leviathan. This is Candorus. We're at the Ebon Hawk. Like we figured, it's under heavy guard. But don't worry, we'll figure out a plan to take care of them.
Excellent. So Candace is already at the Ebon Hawk with the rest of the crew. So let's go into the lift and so we're gonna have to go to the bridge. I mean let's try going to the hangar. Yeah, we have to go to the bridge first. Right then, so Calf needs levelling up, so we might as well do that whilst we're here. Attributes. Oh, they're all at a perfect thing. And I because I've levelled him up differently, um he his intelligence isn't as high as I once made it. So I'm gonna actually raise his constitution just to make him a little bit tankier. And then yeah, treat injury and awareness that will do. Feet wise we'll just give him some extra melee or melee, because I never know how to pronounce that properly. Um because I am gonna switch calf to swords at some point during this for one segment. And let's take out the Sith, shall we? How did you miss? How on earth did I miss? And again, it's interesting how the Sith actually use tactics here and they actually throw grenades. Which is actually quite dangerous. As you can see, Karth's already nearly dead. So let's heal him up. Again, playing this on impossible difficulty has actually made this quite tense compared to my normal playthrough. So let's stun everyone because that's a power we now have. Okay, we need to try and take these guys out as quick as possible. Oh, they're actually throwing grenades and calves already down. Wonderful. Again, these Sith are actually using tactics, which is really annoying. So, come on, guys, let's uh, take these guys out as quick as possible. Again, why is the lightsaber barely doing any damage? I don't know, but there we go. So, calf already went down. Oh, and there's more, of course, there's already more. The other issue as well is they all have shields, which doesn't help. Let's make this now if I was smart I'd also be using my shields, but we're not, so let's get what we can. Oh wow, there's loads of Sith around. There's more Sith than I remember there being here. You cannot win. Okay, see that they're, they're really grenade heavy here. I don't remember them being this addicted to throwing grenades. I don't know if that's just a side effect of impossible difficulty or if that's uh oh calf's back. Hello calf. I'm so, here. Bastila needs to heal everyone because I'm running out of the force. Okay, that will sure. do. Oh there's more. Right, destroy you. And then destroy you. <laughs> Okay, the droids are relatively easy to deal with, so that's good for me. Let's get what we need. Lots of droid items here. Too bad we're not actually using any droids currently. And let's explore everything that we can. Right, computer panel. Is that going to be worth using? Let's have a look. Yeah, we might as well open all the security doors while we're here. We can't do anything with the barracks. Oh, if only we could actually use gas or something there. That would have been useful. I don't think we can actually do anything here, which is really annoying. No, that's a shame, but there is still some enemies around. Well, there are still some enemies around, so let's deal with them. Right, we're going to put some speed on so I can actually get round this map quicker. Find out where the Sith are hiding. Okay, there's another computer panel here. Calf, get out of the way. Impossible difficulty has definitely made this harder than I remember. So, there's a Sith soldier here. Hello. You can see oh, wow, where did, where did they come from? I didn't realise they were there. Right. Thanks for that bastard. Uh, hit by stun you all. Good. Right then, let's get some lightning on them. Wow, they tanked that quite well. 
they're still tanking it really well. How'd you like that? Well, they're tanking this far too well. Okay, so I need to take these guys out as quick as possible. Bastila, yeah, definitely heal. Well done. That's you know that's good. Yeah. I'm actually having to micromanage what I'm doing here. Okay, half might die again. Wow, okay, I actually don't remember ever having this much trouble on the Leviathan before, so this is quite a refreshing challenge for me. Probably the most difficult section of the game so far, since Taris, I think. What can I do? Okay, so Calf needs healing desperately. Because he almost dropped dead again. Or fainted, if we're going to go with Pokemon logic. Uh -huh. Okay, that will do. Sure. So Bastila, I might save Ready. her level up until what? she's nearly dead, because you can use that as a little bit of a cheaty way to heal, you know, characters up. There's one more room. Oh, there's Dark Jedi. I think I'm going to make a save here, just in case. Oh, they're coming to us. Good. Okay, excellent. Any more going to come to us, or can we just sneak past without any worry? Let's turn solo mode on and then leak, get them out, because yes. I don't want my what? party members to run into mines that we can't what? actually deal with. Any more? Oh, yeah, there we are. Oh, run, 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 run. Okay. Can I stun you? Oh, we can. Excellent. All right, let's deal with you then. I'm here. Yes. Right, we'll lure the Dark Jedi out this way because it seems to make sense. Yep, come on then. Come over here. Okay, tank that. Tank, he's still tanking it. Or she's still take, tanking it. Right, can I everyone do? attack, please. Uh -huh. Yes. Bastila doesn't seem to care. Why are you not contributing, Bastila? Okay, they're dead. I don't think there's any more. And if there are, they'll be in the next room up here. So we might as well disable these mines because I definitely don't have enough to recover them, unfortunately. The only mission were here. I've realised playing this game again how good mission actually is because again when I was a kid I barely used her but for mines and stuff she's fantastic completely overpowered when it comes to that okay I think that's all this map uncovered yes awesome okay so let's turn solo mode back off grab what we need to from here and then I think this is going to be the section where we have to do another space walk thing. Right, let's pick up what we need. Some really generic stuff here, but whatever, it's stuff I've got for later on. Right then, let's just do a quick heal before we go outside. So here's... Oh, we need spacesuits. Did we not pick them up? Where are they actually from? Now I've got to remember where the spacesuits are. Oh, they're here. Good. Can't believe I forgot to pick that up. And we can get some grenades whilst we're here, which is good. Thermal detonators are especially good in this game. They're good in pretty much every Star Wars game though. They're overpowered for what they are. Again, the restored... Well, I keep saying restored content mod, but that's not actually the Old Republic 2. The restoration mod restores quite a lot of content to the Leviathan, as I've said before. And you can skip pretty much what I'm doing right now in the Leviathan. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's the reason why Bioware cut it out. Simply because it makes the game incredibly easy. So I'm actually glad I'm playing it the way Bioware intended for players to play it. Because 
it was what the game originally was anyway. And now that we've got what we need, we can now go out into the outer door. Because even in Star Wars, you still need spacesuits in order to breathe in space. So, it's actually quite a nice looking view actually. Considering this was released in 2003, this still holds up incredibly well. So, we've got a painfully slow walk again, but fortunately it's not as bad as Manan. You know, the underwater sections of Manan, because that was painful. At least here, I get the impression we're moving a tiny bit quicker. But again, if you use the restoration content for this game, you can pretty much skip this section as well. Okay, let's go to the inner door, and that should get us back to normal. Now annoyingly what this will do is it will get rid of all of your party members weapons so make sure to re-equip those. Okay so we're equipped. And I think now's the Ready. time to equip some yes. shields just in case. Yes. Oh yeah here we go. And again, this is the room that you can automatically skip to if you decide to talk to that major in the medical bay and manage to get her to take you down here. Let's make this quick. Wait, what is? Oh yeah, I forgot to give Bastila a weapon. That's uh, useful. Right, there you go. There. How do you like that? And that was a really pointless stun, but I'll take it. And we can't go this way yet until we've gone up here. So let's open all the lockers and then we'll do that. Interestingly, this room, if you go the shortcut route, this it adds a little counter computer table thing here. And I just find that quite amusing. So let's open the door. And then we need to go up here, and this is where I'm going to switch cast weapons, which might be controversial for some people because, again, I didn't think about giving Karth uh, any swords until today. So I'm going to give Karth this double bladed sword for this next fight. Right, let's do this. Very resourceful. I assume you had some part in this. You learned your lessons well from me. The only thing you taught me was betrayal and death, so... Don't be a fool. I'm giving you and your companions a chance to surrender. A chance to live. Darth Malak himself is on his way. He'll be arriving any moment. He speaks the truth, Karth. I can feel the Dark Lord's presence approaching. Malak will destroy you. But if you throw down your weapons now, I will ask my master to be merciful. I've seen enough of Sith mercy. You always did like to do things the hard way. Lord Malak would have preferred live prisoners, but corpses will have to do. I guess Karth used to whine even back then. Right then, so these guys I imagine will start throwing grenades. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set everyone up to attack the Sith over here. Because I think that's the wisest call. We'll help Karth out this way. Oh, who force pushed me? That's actually rather annoying. Oh wow, no, I'm almost. Oh no, no. Oh no. Okay, <laughs> level up, Bastila. Level her up. Wow, that was awful. Um, I might die here. <laughs> Impossible difficulty. Yeah. Uh, right. We got a chance though. Come on, Bastila, we can do this. Uh, stun. Oh, yeah, we're definitely dead. We're definitely. Yeah. Second attempt. Put shields on. Ready. What can I do? What? And then hope they don't get disabled during the cutscene. Of course they get disabled during the cutscene. Thanks, game. Right, this time. Everyone equip shields really quickly. What can I do? And then take out these two Sith here. Because I think that makes sense. 
and then we'll stun as many people as we can at the front to deal with yep. what we need to. Oh, and of course, you know, heal everyone. Heal. Might have to spam this for a while. And level Bastila up. Okay, I need to heal everyone again, so... Right, keep it. Oh, cast dead. Great. Wow, these guys are brutal today. What's going on? Right, just stun them. That's a good call. Please don't die, Bastila. Oh, lovely. Okay, the Admiral's stunned. Good. Oh, great. Attempt number three. I can't believe I'm having this much trouble taking out Soul Cara. Doesn't normally happen. Let's try that again. I don't want to be corpses this time, though. No. Okay, so put the shields on via the slightly cheaty method. Um, yeah, I was wondering where calf shield had gone. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, so just to make my life a little bit easier, Bastila can wear some Jedi robes for a change, because that will help her out. And Calf can put on Kalo Nord's armor. Okay, now we're going to get over here. We're going to attack as many people as we can, and then we're going to stun as many as we can. Yes. And hope for the best. Okay, we stunned. Oh, we stunned the Admiral as well, which is really good. So I'm going to throw some grenades at him whilst this is going on. Because that will hopefully weaken his shields down. Okay, Calf's almost dead. We need to heal desperately. Man, nobody likes Calf here. Stun. Just keep stunning. Calf might die here. Or maybe not. Okay. Let's take the ad well. Okay, good. Now, I think it's fitting that we leave Calf to deal with him. Because get, give him his revenge. Ready. There you go. Calf's got his revenge that he wanted. And let's take out the Sith. Instead of just standing here. There. How'd you like that? That was so much harder than it should have been. Cars. Cars. The Admiral, he's still alive. It's time to finish this. Forget him, Car. We have to get out of here before Malak arrives. Don't you understand what this man has done to my life? Do you know the pain he's brought me? Killing him won't ease the pain, Karth. Do not become what you despise. Karth. <laughs> Must tell you. <laughs> Must tell you something. <laughs> Come closer. Can you at least say please? <laughs> you didn't know. Remember them whenever, whenever you look at those you thought were your friends. Ah! It can't be true, can it? No, 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 it can't. Damn you, Saul. Damn you. Forget it, Calf. Whatever he said, he was only trying to hurt you. Basil, it is true, isn't it? And, and you knew. You and the whole damn Jedi Council, you knew the whole time. Karth is not what you think. We had no other choice. Please, you don't understand. So make me understand. 
Whatever this is about, Karth deserves an answer. So start talking, Bastila. Not here, Karth. Please, there's no time. Malak is coming. This isn't the place. Please, Karth, I'm asking you to trust me for just a little while longer. She's right, Karth. This isn't the time. We can get into this after we escape. Okay, I'll trust you, Bastila, but as soon as we're off this ship, I expect some answers. Of course, Karth. As soon as we get to the Ebonhawk, I'll explain everything. To both of you, I promise. Okay, so the alarms are going off, so first thing we want to do is loot Sol, because he has some really good stuff on him. So I'm going to have the shield for myself, because it's arguably one of the best shields in the entire game, if not the best shield. Calf can have his guns back, because he's much better with guns than swords. And we also want to give him... Actually, we don't want Bendix Blaster anymore, do we? We want that Sith Assassin Pistol of uh, Soul Carrots because the damage on it is ridiculously good. And it also has a chance to stun, which is really good. So we're going to give Karth that and hope he gets some good stunnage. Next thing we need to do is go to this computer panel and open the docking bay doors so we can escape. If we try and slice, we can't do it, so... Yeah, we just can't do it, so let's log off, and there we go. Now, we're going to have some people join us in a moment, if we wait around long enough. So, we're going to use this time to put shields Ready? on. Yes. What? And now, we're going to get out of here, as quick as we can. And we're going to hear this alarm for quite a while, annoyingly, so... I'll try and get out of here as quick as possible. Okay, these guys are relatively easy compared to Sol, which is good. And let's pick up the remains if they can just get out. Calf, get out of the way. And let's get out of here. Now, if I remember correctly, we are going to... Oh, yeah, there's Dark Jedi again. So the... some of the enemies have respawned, but that's not a problem. Okay, Stun both of them, which is good. I think Karth got a stun in there with his new gun that he acquired from his former master. Now let's get to the lift and then get out of here. Oh and there's some Sith. Oh and he's got grenades. Wonderful. Let's stop you. And let's stop you as well. Okay, let's take everyone out that we can. If you guys could contribute, that would be really useful. Now hopefully the remains are going to be grenade based, of course they're not, apart from one. And the LED lights around my TV have just turned on randomly, again I don't know why certain electrical equipment just turns itself on randomly and then it will turn itself back off. It's really bizarre. It's almost as if it's been possessed. So what we need to do now is go to the hangar. And we're on the last section of the Leviathan. It's Candorus. We took care of the guards. We're inside the Ebon Hawk and all systems are go. As soon as you guys join us, we can get out of here. Awesome. So this door is automatically going to open, I believe. Yep. So we're going to use that to our advantage and stun. Okay, most of them were stunned, which is good. I think it's also time we used a slightly overpowered power, which is... Oh no, we didn't upgrade that, did we? Yeah. Oh, I was going to use Force Wave, but we haven't got it. Okay, so let's just keep stunning as best we can, because they'll probably come back in a moment. There we go. Stasis Field is so good. But yeah, this TV has turned itself on about three or four times in the same day, just because I've used it recently. It's really strange. Unfortunately, it's booting up on a channel that isn't actually active, i.e. it's on HDMI. So it's just turned itself off now out of the corner of my eye. But it's really irritating. Oh, there's Dark Jedi and a Dark Jedi Master stun. Oh, we got the stun. Awesome. That's thanks to good wisdom, from what I remember. Okay, that was relatively painless. And all of them apart from one appear to be holding a grenade, which was quite funny. 
this section of the Leviathan is actually quite small. There's not much left to do now. So let's go through these blast doors. Yes. Yeah, yes. everyone's still got shields on, which is good. Oh, hello. Um, stasis. Just keep using it. There. You'd think the gear on the Leviathan would be more interesting than just med packs and grenades and computer spikes and repair parts, but whatever, we'll go with whatever the Sith want to give us. Oh, there's a door up here. Does that actually take us anywhere? It does not. No, it doesn't. Right then, so back to it. That was another unexpected break I had to take. So let's equip what we, well, let's get what we need to out of here. And yes, Darth Malak does look a little different from the normal game. Darth Malak. Down you go! <laughs> I hope you weren't thinking of leaving so soon, Bastila. I've spent far too much energy hunting down you and your companions to let you get away from me now. Besides, I had to see for myself if it was true. Even now, I can hardly believe my eyes. Tell me, why did the Jedi spare you? Is it vengeance you seek at this reunion? This meeting was inevitable, Malak. As is the outcome. I am actually surprised this confrontation did not happen sooner, given how powerful your mind once was. Even the combined power of the Jedi Council couldn't keep your true identity buried forever, could it? The Jedi do not believe in killing their prisoners. No one deserves execution, no matter what their crimes. The Council would not normally accept an adult for training, but this is a special case. They say the Force can do terrible things to a mind. It can wipe away your memories and destroy your very identity. Tatooine. Kashyyyk. Manan. Korriban. Revan visited each of these worlds searching for clues to reveal the hidden location of the Starforge. The lure of the dark side is difficult to resist. I fear this quest to find the Starforge could lead you down an all too familiar path. What greater weapon is there than to turn an enemy to your cause? To use their own knowledge against them? from what you once were, Revan. Recognize that you were once the Dark Lord, and know that I have taken your place. I'm Darth Revan. 
How is that possible? You do not yet remember, Revan. The Jedi set a trap. They lured us into battle against a small Republic fleet. During the attack, a team of Jedi Knights boarded your ship. The Jedi strike team captured you, and the Council used the Force to reprogram your mind. They wiped away your identity and turned you against your own followers. Do you mean I'm really your master? Once I served you, Revan. But I always knew that one day the title of Dark Lord would be mine. When that Jedi strike team boarded your vessel, I saw my day had come. I ordered my own ships to fire on your bridge. I thought I could destroy all my enemies with a single glorious victory. I never dreamed that Jedi would take you alive from the wreckage. But why did you betray your master? You mean why did I betray you, Revan? You are the one who taught me the ways of the Sith. The strongest must rule if we are to survive. You knew I would one day challenge you for supremacy, but you underestimated me. I acted sooner than you expected and seized the Sith throne with a single brilliant stroke. Why wouldn't the Jedi simply kill me? The Jedi are fools. They do not believe in executing prisoners. Originally, I assumed you had died in the battle. Imagine my surprise when I found out you were still alive, Revan. Bastila, is this true? It's true. I was part of the team sent to capture Revan. To capture you. When Malak fired on the ship, you were badly injured. We thought you were dead. Your mind was destroyed, but I used the Force to preserve the flicker of life in your body. I brought you to the Jedi Council. They were the ones who healed your damaged mind. Then why don't I remember being Revan? The Jedi Council didn't restore your wounded mind, Revan. They merely programmed it with a new identity, one loyal to the Republic. They tried to make you their slave. Why not just let me die? The Jedi hold all life sacred, even that of a Sith Lord. I could not just let you die, Revan, not if it was possible to save you. Bastila hides the truth behind noble words, Revan. The Jedi needed the memories buried deep in your wounded mind. There was no other way to bring them out. They had to keep you alive. But why program me with another identity? We couldn't simply restore your true identity. Revan was too dangerous. But locked inside your mind was information the Republic needed. The secrets of the Starforge. The Council created an identity for you. A soldier under my command. Your subconscious memories were supposed to lead me to the Starforge. There was no other way to get the information. They made you their puppet, Revan. And Bastila was the handler pulling your strings. But what if I remembered who I really was? That was a risk the Council chose to take. I had to try and draw out the secrets of the Starforge. It was our only hope of stopping the Sith. There was no other choice. Why you, Bastila? Why did the Council choose you? I used my Force powers to heal you on that bridge. We share a bond. I convinced the Council I could use our bond to draw out your memories and lead us to the Starforge. Tell the truth, Bastila. You wanted to taste the dark side for yourself. You knew the only way the Council would permit you to explore the Sith's power was through Revan's lost memories. No. I wanted to help you, Revan. I thought this mission would redeem you, that it would atone for your past crimes. How else could you be saved? You used me, Bastila. You're no better than the Sith. How can you say that? Malak nearly killed you, but the Jedi Council gave you another chance to live. They gave you a chance to redeem yourself by defeating the Sith. A rash and futile hope. The dark side is too strong, my power is too great. Even my old master is no longer a match for me. A small part of me has always regretted betraying you from afar. I always knew there were some who would think I acted out of fear, that I did not want to face you. But now fate has given me a second chance to prove myself. Once I defeat you in combat, no one will question my claim to the Sith throne. My triumph will be complete. Triumph, Malak? You seem to forget that I'm still alive. The Jedi Council were foolish to let you live. I won't make the same mistake. 
We shall finish this alone in the ancient Sith tradition. Master versus apprentice, as it was meant to be. Okay, so we're now alone, and we've got to deal with Malak ourselves, so this is probably not going to go well, uh, but we'll see. Oh, you can't do that. Yeah, that wasn't too bad, so Malak's going to run off. So really, he is a bit of a coward. So in order to get to Malak, we have to go all the way around. I'm going to put a shield back on in a moment. We have to go pretty much around the entire perimeter of these rooms. And then we sneak up to him from behind. Well, that was easy. This isn't over, Malak. Your friends do not give up easily, Revan. You always could inspire loyalty. But even the three of you together cannot stand against my power. For the Jedi! <sighs> I'll hold Malak off. You two get out of here. Find the Starforge. Yeah, I'm still frozen, Bastila. No, Bastila, he's too strong. No! The door's sealed. We can't get past. Come on, we have to get to the Evan Hawk. What about Bastila? We have to help her. Bastila doesn't stand a chance against Malak, but we can't help her. Not here. We have to get off the ship and find the Star Forge. That's the key to beating the Dark Lord. Bastila sacrificed herself so we could get away. We can't let her sacrifice be in vain. Come on! And history's repeating itself, just like with Trask. And we've leveled up again, but we're not going to do that right now because we need to get out of here. So let's do that. And we're going to head this way and hope that... I think we get some of that gear back. Oh, no, we don't. We get Bastila's lightsaber back, but we don't get the other equipment. Oh, that's annoying. I'm going to have to load a previous save off screen so I can still keep her equipment. Right, let's leave the hangar then, and get off the Leviathan forever. And that mod, that mod I downloaded where you can get rid of the fighter simulator bits, um, that doesn't get rid of this one. And that's fine because this is a story based one and I'm perfectly fine with story based ones. And it makes sense here given that we've just escaped a very powerful ship. The music appears to have disappeared which is, you know, handy. Really irritating that the background music disappeared then. It's been a bit glitchy for a couple of minutes though. Where is Bastila? What happened on the ship? We ran into Malak. He would have killed us, but Bastila sacrificed herself so we could get away. You mean she's... She's dead? Bah, Malak won't kill her. Don't be foolish. He'll want to use her battle meditation against the Republic. Turn her to the dark side and the Sith will always be victorious. We can't help Bastila. Not unless we find the Star Forge first. Not so fast. We've got a bigger issue to deal with here. They deserve to know the truth about you. Do you want to tell them what Malak said? Or should I? 
I'll tell them. I'm... I'm Darth Revan. Revan? What, what are you talking about? Is this some kind of a joke? No, it's no joke. The Jedi Council captured Revan and erased the Dark Lord's mind, programming in a new identity. Saul Karath told me on the Leviathan, and Bastila confirmed it. You're Darth Revan? This is... this is big. Do you... do you remember anything about being the Dark Lord? Small bits, a few strange dreams and visions, that's all. Just a few flashes. That's it. Nothing more? Then I don't think there's a problem. It seems to me that if you don't really remember anything about being Revan, then it doesn't really matter anymore. You are who you are now, right? Of course it still matters. How do we know more memories won't come flooding back? How do we know Revan won't suddenly turn on us? The whole time we've been chasing after Malak, we've had his old Sith Master right at our side, listening to our secrets, hearing our plans. Blame the Jedi Council for this calf, not me. Hey, you've got nothing to be sorry about. You didn't ask for this. Besides, I know you. You're not Revan anymore. Whatever you used to be, you're one of us now. <laughs> Big Z and I will stick by you. We owe you our lives. We won't desert you now. How can you say that, Mission? The Sith bombed my homeworld, Revan took away my family, and destroyed my life. It was Sol Karath who commanded the fleet that attacked your people, Karth. And it was Malak who gave the order. You know this. I have felt the presence of the dark side in you, Revan. As it is in all of us. I know the dangers of that path. Yet I also know the Fallen can be redeemed. I judge you by your actions. And as long as we have been together, I have seen you act as a servant of the light. Pretty sure Jahani doesn't normally have dialogue in this sequence, so I'm assuming that's a restoration change. What about you, Jolie? What about me? I already knew who you were, though it wasn't my place to tell you. Better off that you know, if you ask me. Does it change anything? I'm not here to judge you. You'll do what you have to do, and I'll help if I can. A little bit dubious how Jolie would know my true identity this whole time. He could be lying, I'm not actually sure, but I like to think he's being genuine there. What do you think, Andrus? You defeated the Mandalore clans in the war, Revan. You were the only one in the galaxy who could best us. We had never met one like you before, and never since. How can you even ask if I'll follow you? Whatever you're fighting, it will be worthy of my skill. I'm your man until the end, Revan. No matter how this plays out. You won't abandon me, will you, T3? I knew the little guy would come through for you. Droids don't hold grudges. What do you have to say, HK47? Commentary. I am experiencing something unusual, Master. Why? What's happening? Answer. My programming is activating my deleted memory core. I believe I have a... a homing system that is restoring it, Master. So this is the stimuli you were waiting for? Explanation. I believe so, Master. I was unaware of my homing system until it had been activated. It seems that the homing system deliberately restores my deleted memory core upon... upon returning to my original master. You mean Revan? Affirmation. Correct, master. Sith protocols maintain that all droid knowledge be deleted before assassination missions and restored upon return. I have returned to you and my full functionality is now under your personal command. It is a distinct pleasure to see you again, Master. Well, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Observation. Indeed. I do hope we shall have the chance to engage in combat together again soon, Master. Wow. What are the chances of that happening? Remember, we're talking about the Force here. At this point, Malak himself could drop out of the sky and I wouldn't bat an eyelash. Good point. Technically, he already did that when we got captured. Well, Karth, will you stand with me against Malak? Well, the others seem to trust you, and I don't see any other way that we can stop the Sith. And I suppose that Malak is the real enemy here. I really don't have any other choice, do I? I won't let you down, Karth. I promise. I want to believe you. 
You've proven yourself time and time again during our mission, but this is a little much for me to wrap my mind around. You have to try, for Bastila's sake. This must be even more of a shock to you. I don't know how you even keep going. I guess we both just have to find a way to push forward. Don't worry. I won't let my personal feelings get in the way of my assignments or this mission. But don't forget, I've sworn an oath to defend the Republic. As long as this mission stays on course, I'll stick with you. But I won't let you betray the Republic under any circumstances. So I guess that's it then. We keep going. We've still got one more star map to uncover if we're gonna find that Star Forge and save Basila, so let's do it before it's too late. And there we go, that is the end of what is going to most likely be the longest episode of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. I'm going to leave it there for now, and next time we'll start off with Korriban, arguably my favourite planet in the first Knights of the Old Republic game. So thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.